YouTube. We are in Rutland, Vermont, visiting my parents' house. And I thought we'd uh, pull out the old idle idle my dad had kicking around, chuck it at some uh, target down range here. Uh, hope, let me know if the signal is not working out for you. I'm out here in the yard, so it only showed a few bars for the Wi Fi. And then we're going to head inside my parents' house and I'll show you the kayak paddle, an illusion kayak paddle I made in boat building school, a teapot I made for my mom in high school, and uh, the rake I made out on a loan out of bamboo. It looks just like a store bought rake. If you haven't seen it already, it's pretty cool. And then we'll do some QA for a bit. Um, I got 45 minutes for all to you guys right now. There is no 87 days video. Uh, the kids and I needed a break. And so we headed off. They were begging and said, uh, and I said, yeah, that's a good idea. We headed to Vermont. Been here hanging out with my folks. I tried to finish the video for this week, catch and cook a uh, pizza in the Dutch oven. And uh, video filming turned out awesome. Editing up late did not, uh, just couldn't do it. So uh, just, it's more important to be spending time with the family right now. So my apologies, guys. But uh, you'll be able to see that next week. And if you guys are in New England, Make sure you look up the New England Bushcraft Show. I'll put it in the link below. I will be there next weekend. I'm gonna be doing a class on slingshot making, a class on filming YouTube videos and filming and editing and all that stuff. I'll be talking about it with those of you that are interested as well as doing a like, I'll be there the whole time. But um, it's a one day thing on next Saturday. Uh, I'll put it in the link below right there. You can hit, hit us up and come out and see us if you're in New England. It's in Massachusetts. Uh, I can't remember the name of the town, so uh, look it up. Come on out. It'll be it's going to be a great time for those of you interested in bushcrafting. And uh, now you know early enough of time you could drive all the way across the United States and still make it on time. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, so let's uh, let's check this out. I'll see if I can hit the target. I've been practicing for like 20 minutes until my folks left. They took the kids and they're off to Sunday school, and I'm going to meet them for church in a uh, in an hour. So. Let's see if I can do this. I have only been able to hit it once. It's uh, about 28 feet out, and this is actually really hard. Oh, I hit the bottom of it after it skipped. <laughs> That's a crossbow target, and I've only been able to get it to sink in like a... This is a practice tip for a regular arrow. And these are awesome. I'll link one below from Amazon. I now have an Amazon store where you can get all the camera equipment I have, all of that stuff, all the stuff you see me use in the videos. I talk about ketogenic stuff, the books that I read. Everything is on my Amazon store link below and uh, help support this channel when you shop there. So thanks for those of you that have been shopping there already. So I'll put one of these in the Amazon store. And uh, which this is made exactly after the one that we saw on Amazon. My dad. It's a stick, you got a grip here, and the two leather things keep it so when you throw it, it doesn't fall out of your hands, you don't drop it, because you, you don't wanna have a tight wrist, you wanna have a kinda loose, let it, let it rock. And you got this back here with a little pokey thing, and that notches into the back of your arrow, which has a spot in there to, for it to notch into, a little tenon, and you bring it back, and this basically works just like the sling does, gives you more leverage, but it's a weird thing is at a certain distance, the arrow kind of goes like this when you throw it and then it corrects. And I tend to find that at this distance at like 28 feet or, or so, it's a lot less accurate because you're, that correction usually means it lobs itself just over your target. So let's see if we can't get it. Oh, nailed it. <laughs> oh, what's going on with the focus there? Oh, sure, it goes right out of focus when I get it. Almost like I planned that, huh? I'm not scamming you. I did get it. <laughs> Let's try again. See if we can get a good one. I think because it's focusing on the arrow back here, and then I chuck it. So I'll move forward a little. Oh, got it on the skip. This thing is fun. I'm gonna make a uh, full set of these and do a video on making a set and do a, a slingshot versus addle addle video at some point this summer. This is 
This thing's a blast. Especially if you've got threes, you don't have to run over there every time. We're down to one after, or after I don't remember what was going on. Playing with other things at the same time, like axes on top of arrows and don't, don't play well together or something. Whoa! Oh, that was a long one. Hold on. <laughs> Honestly, I think where these atlatls excel is at a distance of like 40 feet, you know? I bet chucking this at something when you're getting accurate with it, 40 feet to, to 60 feet, you know, it really, that's when it starts to straighten out, gets a nice smooth run, and with the power that if it's already its own weight to it and a good tip on it for hunting or something, these could be very, very efficient. Oh, comments. I was stuck down to sleep. Squirrel, you cook it. So, uh, here we go. Try again. Oh, just keeps glazing right over the target. That's the problem I've had in, in the past. Is like, the more you focus on the target, the more it goes, and then it. It just like arcs right over the target. Let's try it one more time. A trick just like anything else is that whole follow through thing. It's, it's like you want to go like this and stop, but the, then you lose the advantage of it. And then you want to lob it as hard as you can. And then you're even more inaccurate. It's just slow as smooth, just like golf. You know, you you get your you get your swing on, and you just follow through, so that you're nice and smooth. And then the magic happens. Let's try again. Oh, right next to it. Boy, that's fun. So those of you just tuning in, no 87 days video today. I hope this looks clear enough. Uh, it, uh, we're out here in the yard and the Wi-Fi is way inside. Uh, I wanted to shoot one. I'll put a link below for one that you can get on Amazon if you're up for that. If not, I suggest go on Amazon, get yourself some feathers, a, you know, a little pile of birch dowels. I think this thing is, I don't know, like, Three and a half feet, four feet, four feet long. And uh, you can look them up anywhere you want online as to the proportions, you know, because the atlatl itself, the chucker, is half the length of the spear. I think that's kind of important, otherwise you get all wonky. And they don't work, I haven't found, I've found so far, they don't work well at short distances. You do a longer distance and then it, you have more time for it to readjust for when you first chuck it, it's all sidewinding and then flipping and flopping and then it straightens out. So 40 feet. I want to make a full set of these for at the house for this summer for when friends are over. And uh, if those of you just tuning in, there's not an 87 days series uh, video this week. Sorry, but I'm in Vermont visiting my folks. We're going to head inside in a couple minutes, do some Q&A, and I'll show you some of the stuff I made growing up. Here in Vermont, a uh, Aleutian kayak paddle and teapot I made for my mommy. There was a painting too I tried to find it this morning of the of the flower garden, but apparently they broke the frame and it, the painting itself is squirreled away somewhere now. But uh, there we go. Ah, oh, right next to it. Ah. This is a distance I can't miss with my slingshot for the most part. Let's see if I can hit the can. One last good go of it with this thing. And then we'll return to the real weapons. See if I can't get that can. Ah! Missed. Alright, one more time.
These are fun. Nothing like playing with the primitive toys out in the yard, huh? Slings, atlatls. All right, that can is mine. Ah. <laughs> you know what? Let's just go with the tried and true. The old maple natural fork. Missing all over the place with everything this morning. That's all right. Practice makes perfect. There we go. A couple warm up shots before I hit it, right? I wasn't aiming. <laughs> That's the uh, one I made when I went to New Hampshire the other day. Just a little maple natural fork I picked up on a little hike I was doing while I was waiting for stuff to go down. So let's head inside. I will show you guys some of the stuff I made growing up here in Vermont, as well as the rake that I made out there on a loan out of bamboo. And, and then we'll sit around, I'll drink my coffee, and you guys can ask me questions, the usual. So, this is my parents' house. If you saw the, the old vlog, they now have a new, can you see it? There's a new roof on up there. In the uh, tornado vlog, my parents' roof, when I was right inside here for a visit, blew off the house. And you had to check that out in the, in the vlogs. That was tornado winds or something it was called. That was so cool. Unbelievable, sitting right here and then the big metal roofing, the contractors that did it didn't like screw it or double nail it or something. And so it just like blew right off the house. So we're inside my parents' house, don't mind the just like any good carpenter's house, there's a lot of um, unfinished, but they kind of like the wall like this. So I think they might even be looking for like reclaimed boards to do some of this over with. I love it. This is this is a sanctuary for me. And parents' house, my parents are awesome, and so coming here is like a sanctuary for me and the girls to be able to to rest. And so we've just been having fun playing with the family and spending time together. So. And the girls love it. They got their own little room, my old bedroom to play in. And I'll show you. Let's see. Is it dirty or is it just the... There we go. There's the focus. Hopefully you guys got a good focus. There, up here, my dad put the Aleutian kayak paddle I made at boat building school. It's a... It's got mahogany. These kind of things are so hard to show on camera. I turn it like that so there's more room. So it's got two thin paddles that are, I don't know, three inches in diameter. Up back here to like two and a half back here. And a mahogany inlay. Man, I would have loved to have this when I was out with the reed boat. It's got a, and then it's got this ridge that goes from the handle and that tapers down into the blade. You can see right there that ridge gets goes from a small quarter inch bead up here to turning into the shape of the I don't know inch and a quarter handle right there both ends I was still early with my carpentry when I made this at the boat building school so I got a chunk out of the end when I was planing it because I planed this all by hand to make this with a rabbit plane and stuff like that to make that bead into it and build that into it all custom and uh and then i shaped and sanded it oiled it and i brought it home and left it here for a couple days and i have not been able to reclaim it and because my parents don't want to let go of it now they're like ah we we deserve something for sending you to boat building school and all that <laughs> all right and so and then we got the rake that I made out on a loan. So let me grab that. Some of you may not believe I made this while I was out there surviving 87 days alone, but I did. It's got some little spots of uh, like mildew as it had uh, kind of dried. I wanted to scrub it off, but my dad didn't want me to. He wanted me to leave it. 
but that's that's the bamboo rake right there all made with my fishing line and stuff this is what i did when i was bored at night and make stuff out there 200 sets of spoons and chopsticks so i took and i put little stakes in the ground and i heat bent i split the bamboo first and do you guys know how to split wood i should show you how to split wood in a video you split to split a stick bamboo or anything you split it get a knife in there and as you start to pull them apart if the split starts to go this way it's going to split off and become too thin then you bend the, the thicker one a little bit extra more and the split will follow back to center. And so I was able to split tons of bamboo and make things out there. So I split the bamboo. Let me get it close enough. So you see it split and I made a stakes in the ground and then I'd heat them on the fire and then bend them in between the stakes and let them cool with that shape to it. Now these are all really strong. This is just like a store-bought rake. All, every single one of these tines and I use this to rake up if you watched the alone alone on TV This is the rake that I made out there in Patagonia and I raked up all around my shelter To collect the debris that I cut off the bamboo so that I could Stuff my inner walls with that bamboo um, Fibers from the that came off the sticks. There's one of the band and, and then I'll, of course bamboo handle yeah, let's see if I can get it and like I was telling you before, if you've been watching, all of the bamboo there was solid. So it was actually more closely related to, well, you can, there we go, more closely related to river cane. Zach, I believe you would have more accuracy if your atlatl was a bit longer, generally three quarters, uh, uh, Possibly. I'm not, uh, I haven't done a lot of adlatling and stuff. I feel like I kind of dropped the ball by not doing something like that out there in Patagonia just for the heck of it. Because, I mean, that bamboo, what is better than a perfect bamboo shaft for something like an adlatl? I could have made a sweet adlatl set just for entertainment. But instead, I made a rake so I could clean my door yard from the uh, wood chips and things and all the different sawings and stuff like that and keep my set place tidy because uh, I mean it's was it's about food and everything but also keeping yourself entertained so I made a rake and I gave it to my dad to say thank you for everything um, growing up and uh, and instilling in me a sense of adventure and a sense of uh, never quitness Never quit itis. Never. Don't quit. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> Never surrender. You know? And uh, so I thought that was a good memento of uh, yeah, that and he was always telling us to clean up. So. <laughs> so so I gave him a rate to show that I cleaned up while I was out there. I cleaned up. Half a million. Woo! No. <laughs> cleaned up. And... Uh, Put that back on the wall. That's that's his. I won't be able to get that back until he's good and gone. <laughs> what else? Uh, there used to be so many things around here that I made. I'll show you this. This is something I made for my mom. That turned out pretty cool. I liked doing a lot of stuff growing up uh, in high school. So one of the things it, my my in high school my dyslexia meant I almost failed. But my art grade and my um, gym grade and my pottery class grades were what kept me afloat. And the teachers knew I was going to boat building school my senior year. And I always tried hard. Um, it's just I, my testing grades for like other things were horrible. So I had to make it myself. Mom, she loved Blue Willow plates. You guys ever seen Blue Willow? They got the little people on the bridge, the little Chinese people with the, you know. And so I made her a little teapot. And there's the lid the potter's wheel and oh, there's some sort of keys in there I wonder if that's the missing keys that they were talking about so it turned out awesome it's functional and all glazed and I thought it turned out pretty sweet there was some other cappuccino cups and things like that that I took back with me to home oh, I didn't even sign my work who knows that I actually did it I could just be saying this I'm no, just kidding <laughs> And, uh, I don't know, well, I'm taking you guys down memory lane because we don't come here 
all that often, but like two or three times a year, and usually I just do a vlog on it. Here's here's young me. You can recognize that hair from almost a couple couple weeks ago before I trimmed it. Look at that guy. That's what I looked like without a beard. What a fruitcake. Man, I was... Can you imagine? Look at that. Oops. There, where's the glare? Getting rid of the... How'd I get rid of the... There we go. That's me back in high school. I think that was my senior year. Look at all that hair. It's still just like that, and it was just the other day when I was talking with you guys. Um, what else we got here? The rest of the family. Oh, we got a boat that I built. An article about me and the Northeast boat and the boat that I built. That was the first one I built at Northeast Boat, I don't know, seven years ago. I've been building boats since I was 18, but this one got a big write-up in the, the uh, in a Wooden Boat magazine in Maine. And... Let's see, what else? I'll show you some other stuff. I got the, oh, there's my whole family. For those of you that care, there's the, there's the family. Mom, dad, me with it about the same time. Uh, my brother James, who's now super grown up. And Joey and I think my sister Abby was just a, uh, well, she wasn't around then. There's my sister Abby, right there, and what else we got? Oh, the family collection of photos that mom, you guys want to see me down through the ages? All of my school pictures right in a row. Yeah, there's some interesting phases of my life that I went through as far as, uh, like, um, uh, what would you uh, say? Uh, uh, there, there was, there might have been, in in this thing of photos, there might be an achy, breaky, breaky phase <laughs> that you're gonna, you like, I think. I'm trying to get the can. There we go. All right, I got. Should we start back at where we're we gonna start? Okay, we start at the beginning. There's a grade school or kindergarten or something, which I got held back in. I think that's me right there. And my, yeah, I'm the one with a big old grin, just like, ee -hee. even though that was a really hard year for me because they didn't know I had dyslexia at that point. So I was, I struggled and they held me back and things. Uh, there's me. My mom says that she can always see the sadness in my face because that was the year that the um, teacher stood me in front of the classroom and made fun of me because of my dyslexia because they didn't understand why I wasn't able to do the things they asked me to do as far as spelling and, and reading and things. Um, and I was a little older after they had figured that out and I was still trying to maybe hide from school because it was embarrassing and, and difficult at times. And there we go, there's a better smile. I was getting, things were getting better. Uh, I had, they had found out I had dyslexia and they were, I was put into a special class with all of the other kids that uh, Miss Laura Foley here in Vermont was uh, in Rutland was this great teacher that uh, took all this time to work with us that had uh, learning disabilities and just have adventures with us and, and just uh, teach us in the most interactive way and just slow and patient and uh, just, just fun. I just remember having so much fun, you know? Um, I got picked on by some of the other kids a lot because of being in the special class. Some of the kids were um, were like wheelchair and very disabled and very, very, very special, not just that had dyslexia or learning disability or ADD or something. So, you know, that meant getting picked on a little bit at times, but uh, that's all right. There's me again. I the, Look at that hair, slick to the side, super blonde back then. Are my eyes nearly as blue as that anymore? It's hard to tell from the photo stuff. I've been told that they... Oh, there we go. And then uh, shaved head phase because parents were like, yeah, if you want a haircut that's not a buzz cut, then you pay for it yourself. <laughs> so that's why we had buzz cuts. And uh, 
Oh, look at that handsome guy. What what year was this? I don't know what year this was. Bugle Boy, though. I was wearing the Sport and the Bugle Boy. Yeehaw. And there's me at uh, some other grade. I don't know where we're at now, but look at that turtleneck. I remember this is when Mom was picking out, like, school clothes for the beginning of each year. Like, a, you know, from L.L. Bean, we get, like, two special outfits and the turtleneck and the... And the thing was part of the photo that she had seen on like in the catalog, so she'd order the matching turn on that. Oh, here we go. Achy Breaky Heart. I I this is when Billy Ray Cyrus came out with Achy Breaky Heart or it was big. Look at that. Uh, look at that guy, handsome guy. I had the mullet. I, I didn't even, if I had that hair now, I wouldn't even have had to wear the McFowler mullet there. It was that was all short here. All party in the back, you know. Oh, and I have a that's a deer antler necklace there going on, as well as some other beaded thing I have underneath my shirt. With I don't know what was hanging on there, I think there was actually a chastity key <laughs> that was uh was was something I had taken a chastity vow. It says 14 years old, you know. Don't break my heart, my achy breaky heart. Just don't think he'd understand. And the MacGyver, of course, was my one of my favorite uh, TV shows. You could tell that pretty obviously by the mullet. And oh, there we go. Now we get into skateboarder phase. I had left that achy breaky heart behind and turned into a skateboarder, sporting the shaved around the head with a uh, samurai bun on the top here, all bunned back behind there. And uh, the Stutzi, Stutzi right there. Oh man, I loved that sweatshirt. I wish I still had it. It'd probably be in, in a pile of uh, yarn right now, cotton. Um, but I, I, man, I loved that sweatshirt. It had this giant hood. You felt like a, I felt like a druid wearing it, you know? Even back then I was a nerd with the whole wizards and stuff like that. Because I was issued audiobooks by the state for my dyslexia, I listened to sci-fi books and read, right from an early age, read books about how to do things and listened to sci-fi books. When I said read, it was, I was, I'm still a slow reader even then. I, I don't think I've improved much since high school. As much as I read, I still haven't improved much since high school because it's just, I don't know, it just didn't break for me the way my mom. It broke and she read just fine. Her dyslexia was gone. Mine's still there. And there we go. Still in the skateboarder phase. And uh, that is not the deer antler necklace. I think it's probably actually a pipe. Uh, it was kind of a punk. And so I think that might have actually been like a stone pipe necklace that I had hanging around my, that was like a, had like a figure on it, but it was like square rectangular thing. I was on my way to becoming a dubber for a bit. And uh, uh, although I didn't really enjoy it half as much as my friends, they, they all wanted to like sit around and I was like, let's go mountain bike up to the top of a mountain and and then we'll, we'll be delinquent, you know? And they were like, let's just play Tony Hawk on, on the game system and, and be delinquent. And I was like, that's no fun. Let's go for a long hike and then be delinquent. And so it never really worked well for me, the whole being a stoner. So I, I you know, I kind of grew out of that and, uh, and was like, done with that. That's just, it. I don't want anything dragging me down. I, and I got stuck with it a couple of years here and there and things like that, but I've, I haven't been a uh, smoker in a long time now. And um, I just, you know, that, I just, I don't want anything dragging me down. And maybe it's just me. I know it's legal in places and people use it medicinally and things, but I just help feel that like, I haven't met that many people that smoke lots and or even just a little and aren't dragged down either a little or a lot you know you know what i'm talking about you got cousins or nephews or whatever that uh they're going nowhere you know and that's their whole life and there's me the 96 17 so i don't know where oh i guess that one with the the crazy curly hair on my folks that was one of my senior year and I Looking a little, this was still skateboardy, but uh, I, I had kind of gone away from my first two years of high school misbehaving. And my last two years of high school, I spent um, with the youth group and back in the church again and behaving myself and going after God. And um, 
so there was a, kind of tons of ups and downs over the years, you know, times where I completely rebelled and uh, God always draw, drew me back to to walking with him and then times where I was just semi-stagnant, it didn't matter, I wasn't being bad or doing anything, it just didn't didn't really matter to me and then and a, but the life wasn't exactly great and then there's times now like where I you know I'm walking with the Lord and life is awesome even though things are difficult as all get out you know so um I I feel pretty great about it all um so yeah thanks for watching guys I'm not going to say goodbye I'm just going to say I'll answer your questions now so if you put any questions up I will scroll through, we'll chat while I drink my coffee here, and then I'm going to say goodbye and head off to meet my family at church. The Littles have headed over there to church. There's no 87 Days video today. This is what you get. I'm here in Vermont, and I just, I, I tried to stay up and get it together, and uh, look at, I got to show you something though before we get into that. Look at this. Uh, does Can you see it? Can you see that? That is a Windsor captain's chair. Come on, focus. That's a Windsor captain's chair. My dad made that. Pretty much by hand, all the spindles, bending it, steaming it. That That's where I get my, my handiness from, my father there. And my mom. My grandfather was a uh, eye doctor and, and like kind of a bit of a genius. So um, hit me up if you have any questions. We'll chat for another 20 minutes. Reed boat rescued yet. No, the water hasn't gone down. Chris is um, checking on it tomorrow. So we haven't even bothered. It's tied off to find out whether, because it's up there where he lives, where Chris, my apprentice, lives. What happened to the Reed boat? Gone forever? And it's at the bottom of the river in the Reed boat video, the, the last 87 days video where I did the river race. It got... It hit the rock, and because of the two holes and the way the string goes across, this sharp rock in the middle of the river caught it and turned to the side, and then the water started going over the middle of it, and then it started carrying the ends down, it carried it down, and it bent it right around the rock. I'm hoping to get it out. There's no reason why it couldn't still be salvaged. I could straighten it up, jam a stick down the center of it to stiffen it up a bit, and then add some more reeds that I have up at the shelter and at my house to make it a bit thicker, and all in all, which would just help it and uh and tie it tighten it back up and i i get a whole summer out of it playing around with it some more um i'm gonna make that a part of this youtube series every fall i'm gonna harvest a bunch of reeds and since i don't have to harvest them for the shelter again i'm gonna make something out of reeds like uh joey suggested my brother that we do i do a uh, a reed surfboard and take it down to like kenny bunkport maine and go surfing with it i think that's awesome a reed paddleboard a standing paddleboard maybe a catamaran with a sail and set, try to sail out to Matinicus. I, I have to have a boat, a chase boat or something at that point. But maybe by that point, I'll be a professional reed boat maker and I'll have more um, uh, safe, be more safe because uh, that it just doesn't work well for the river, apparently, because I was worried about that getting stuck on things. I didn't think that would happen. That was pretty crazy that how sharp that rock was and how it really snagged and then the water just pins it to it. Um, Tell us some more about the Dodge commercial. Did you, did they let you keep, the, no, they didn't let me keep the truck. That was a year ago and it was just a repost that I did of, uh, hey, remember this guy's with Facebook, you know, those memories pop up. Man, those can be painful when they're not good memories, but, or, or they're good memories of things that are gone. But uh, guard your heart, you know. Um, please show legs of captain's chair. Okay, I'll show you the legs. So. He turned all of these and stuff and made this whole thing. It's a work of art. And you can see, see the color of the stain here, right here? So it's stained with a red stain and then a black stain over top of it and you rub through till these uh, wear, wear stain shows up. Like right here, you see the, the red? So it's a red stain and then it's rubbed through until the until the uh, uh, other parts show through. It is a beautiful work of art. My dad's a master craftsman. So, you've got to start working on that reed yacht. Yeah, right? Um, uh, are you are you ever going to do any more McFowler episodes? I am. Uh, things have just been really tough right now. 
Um, so thank you guys for your patience and your shares and your subscribes. And if you're just in, uh, there will not be an 87 days video, but hit the links below and my playlist. I rearrange the playlist. So if you're new to this channel that you can go down there and there's less playlists and there's playlists about the main subjects so you can watch um, what you like through. If, you, if you're into the slingshots, you can watch the slingshot videos start to finish in a series or you can watch the 87 days videos in a series or the vlog or um, the McFowler as I come out with a new one of those. So they're more organized there. And in the link in the description below all of my videos, I'm gonna be linking my Amazon store. So if you see anything in the videos and you're like, oh, I'd love to have that or whatever, I wanna know how much it is, boom, you hit that Amazon thing. And for the most part, they will be on my Amazon store page that you can, um, you can purchase it and it helps support this channel. The website, we're about to launch the new uh, new version of the website is like really, really nice now. It's I'm so excited for this. It looks it's gonna look gorgeous. Help help with the whole uh, products that are on there and stuff. It's gonna be sharp. Um, uh, how much money would it take to shave the beard off? I you kidding? This thing won me half a million dollars. You don't think I could have done it without it? I I. Half a million. <laughs> no, I don't think I'd ever shave the beard. Sorry. Uh, maybe for a million. Should we, should we start a uh, a fund? I'll put a big uh, donation price on it to support this channel. I'll shave the beard and grow it back in a week. Um, hey, could you show me the model ship in the background? Uh, in the background to your left. Oh, that's just a piece of wood chip thing. But sure, it's nothing that I made. Um, there was a half model here somewhere that I made. I wonder where all this stuff went. This is the, it's just a, uh, oh, I get the right light. Nothing too crazy. I'm not even sure what it is. And, if you see something my dad made he's his little thing lately has been the uh the little whirly gigs he's been playing with so he made this little kayaker like a little and the wind blows and his little arms go don't ask me why they're all inside and stuff but I think he's a little little eskimo man or something doing his little paddling thing and cute And, uh, any more questions? Sure. Hey, love the channel. Thank you. Do you shoot guns? If so, what kind? I shoot guns infrequently. Um, I used to have a Walther PP22. I used to have an AR-15 when I bought the land. I had those for a while and then, uh, to finish off the payments on time and so I could pay off my land. I ended up selling them and regretting it uh, and horribly. Do you know how to fly fish? I used to fly fish all the time growing up in Vermont. That was one of my rods up there, just a fiberglass one I had started out with. Um, nothing special. And um, I, I tie all my own flies. But just like a lot of the other things that I do, I spent so much time tying flies and making these beautiful flies that matched the areas and the location. And I go here in Vermont, all over the place, fly fishing. I may do this, you know, spend, have these great adventures of getting my line stuck in the tree 90% of the time and, and catching almost nothing. And then I throw a woolly bugger on there, a leech imitation or something, black leech with a little tassel -y thing, like the easiest fly to tie. Throw that there and boom, catch a fish. And I'm like, kind of frustrating. I've never been a good fisherman, so it was kind of a surprise to me that I managed to nail it out there in Patagonia and catch so many fish. Like that, 63 fish and two birds, you know, it was like, that was a lot. That was more than twice and five times as many as a lot of the people that were out there surviving. Um, so, uh, but that was persistent, consistent effort because I had all of my lines all of the time, always baited twice a day in the water catching fish. And uh, so when it dried up for everybody else because of my persistence, and my having that many lines in the water at once, night lines and, and rebaiting and the different methods and the different snare ones and stuff like that, that uh, it, it meant that I was able to 
keep catching fish when the fish were doing their run and nobody else was catching fish. I was still catching them. Um, is it possible to make a blowgun out of reeds? Not out of the reeds or the cane or anything that I have here in Maine um, that I know of. Do you know how I read that? Do you ever think the animals you kill are going up their lives to help you? Uh, no, I don't think that they're necessarily giving up their lives to help me. I think that God gave us all things to, uh, to, to, to be a steward of and to bless us and, um, that their lives, me eating them helps me. Uh, I, I don't think there's anything ultra spiritual in it. Uh, we, man is for the, the earth and the things of the earth are for man and we are to be good stewards of them. Um, is it possible to make a, oh, I read that. Um, I'm just starting to get, give fly fishing a chance. Worms forever. <laughs> Worms are the bomb. Worms and grubs. Grubs are great because they stay on the line. You know, I had a lot of success with grubs. Worms always getting stripped off the line and, and, uh, in, in a survival situation, um, uh, I don't know if that, I don't think it's illegal as long as you, you're you using the fish that you caught that you're allowed to have done, you know, like you catch a perch, you use the gills. Gills catch fish. Gills do a great job. The blood and the scent, you know, makes them, and the gills, when you, if you can get them on the hook, they stay on the hook really well. And uh, you can catch fish with gills really well. Um, Zach, when's the collaboration video with Jorg at the Slingshot channel happening? Someday. Uh, I, as far as I know, he hasn't taken note. Um, Gamekeeper John and I have talked briefly. Um, he, he's not big on the whole internet thing. I, I'm getting a feeling. So uh, I sent him a message like, hey, I was like, hey, we should do a collaboration. I said something on his video. I was like, that's great. You should send me a fork and I'll send you some fo a fork and, and stuff. I'd like to get in a uh, little fun uh, competition with him. You know, he shot a Jenga block out. So I'm going to shoot a Jenga block out and uh, or remove his Jenga block like he did in the video and then shoot one, two more out and see if he can't, uh, and then se you know, send him the challenge. See if he'll uh, if he'll shoot three in a row without knocking down his tower out. If, if I can get it. I mean, that was a bad shot of it. That was a uh, bad, like bad, like, you know, bad, awesome shot that he made. Uh, gar gar yeah, I'm gonna do a garden this year. The, the new house has a nice little gardeny thing going on. Chris is gonna be moving up to the yurt up at the land, so he's gonna be taking care of it and cleaning up that place and, and probably start a little bit of a garden that he's gonna tend up there for me. Um, uh, how much money is left? Wouldn't y'all like to know that after buying the house and other things that have happened recently, let's just say I'm working like everybody else. Um, can you uh, steam fish over boiling water. I don't see why you couldn't, but that would be disgusting steaming fish over boiling water. I mean, unless you're just steaming the fillets and then it's like, you might as well just throw it in the boiling water. What, I mean, what's the effort for, um, and stuff. Uh, are you chicken? I don't know what he's saying there. Um, uh, can you steam fish or that? Do you know any good spots to fish in Vermont? I don't know any good spots to fish in Vermont. I mean, uh, the well, like years ago when I was fly fishing here, I'd go over to Castleton River, and there was all kinds of trout in there, and I never catch anything. I'd cast to them and I'd match the hatch that was happening, and I, I sucked at it. I was better, I was awesome at making flies, but not so awesome at catching fish. And uh, and then there's all these stocked fish in all these rivers, you can see them and it floats right past them. You throw like a, a you know, a, a, like a wool ball on the end of a hook that's orange and you toss that in there, something that looks like the the feed that they eat in a, as they're raising them in the feeder tanks and, uh, and the trout and boom, you catch something that way. It's like, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I aim to learn more as I grow here. Uh, I'm fishing. That's my weak area is fishing. 
Um, I've been working on the bow drill fire. I did, I got some basswood from a tree right here in my parents' yard, made an awesome bow drill. And that'll be in the 87 days video next week, next Sunday, where I made my own bow drill and started a fire with it instead of using the one from Amazon. Um, I started out with that one again in the in the video and then, and then did my own. Um, using that Amazon bow drill showed me so much about how the shavings, what do you want them to feel like? What do you want it to look like? What do you want it to smell like as it's working? All of that stuff. It really, I mean, I feel like it by using that kit, it like jump started my ability to pick the right materials and start a fire with a bow drill. So um, that's cool because that was always a weak area and something I always felt a little bit guilty about. Check in. Is a pug I turn for smoking pot? Hunting, hunting videos with a slingshot or only target practice, kind of like um, urban hunting videos. I wish, I was asking my parents, like, hey, are there any squirrels chewing on, there's so many squirrels here. Are there any squirrels chewing on the house? When I got back from alone, I was, I came for a visit like two weeks later after I got back from Patagonia here in Vermont. And I was standing on the back deck and I had my slingshot from Patagonia with me and a squirrel came out. And I was still in like hunter killer phase and I pulled it out and it was just like whap boom took him down one shot one one shot one kill and and was like and they, my parents came home like a couple minutes later and I'm out there on the porch skinning and gutting a squirrel on some newspaper and they're like what are you doing I was like I I, I just I, I just went for it it was actually squirrel season I think it was in the yeah it was like in the fall and it was acceptable except for I didn't have a uh, a license um so that wasn't good um so i don't recommend doing that so that's why i haven't done any hunting videos because in maine it is legal to hunt with a slingshot there is no slingshot season so it doesn't matter if it's squirrel season or not they say no and so i strive to be above reproach and not to um to remain with integrity and not to cheat outside of season but i would like to I, i'm looking gonna look into it um where i can go to hunt with the slingshot get a license go there and make a trip, even if it's just ridiculously making a long trip to Pennsylvania so I can hunt with, or wherever, with a slingshot for a weekend with Chris and do some slingshot squirrel hunting. I, I don't care. I And deer is cool, but uh, I, I want to actually hunt with my slingshot more. Uh, do you prefer stainless steel or carbon steel knife for your... Um, it's MY. I, I like everything. Just like slingshots, you know, there's certain knives I like and there's certain ones I don't. Um, these are cold steel. Um, 24. I don't, know what, I don't even really know. That's not something that's part of my expertise as far as knowing the types of grinds and things like that. It's not. My concern is making things. I've always, uh, everything I do is surrounded by the making of stuff and so what some things like that are like the particulars of things and words about I don't remember those kind of things so I, it doesn't really bother I don't I don't bother to study it because I, I can't retain it as far as like what kind of steel and what kind of grinds things are I can't remember the names of the wild plants that I know but I know them and I know them by sight and uh, I know that they're safe or they're not safe and so that's that's what's important to me how did you meet Chris? I put an ad on Craigslist, just like how I met my wife. <laughs> that worked out well. I'm uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I put an ad on Craigslist and said, uh, looking, or, no, or, no, it was on Facebook, saying, looking for somebody to help me cut reeds. And uh, and he showed up, and I haven't been able to get rid of him since. <laughs> um, which is a good thing, because he's an awesome helper, and... Uh, and I'm a good buddy now because, you know, we just have so many cool adventures and it's fun to just, we film, do stuff, and then shoot our slingshots and hang out and get a good buddy there and that Chris guy. Um, what if technically the squirrel gets in the way of you? <laughs> That's why I was bugging my parents like, hey, have they been chewing on the side of the house anywhere? Because if they're chewing on the side of the house, I could be saying that it's pest control. And, you know, and it's like, you know, if they're, if we make a trail of peanuts into the house and, and then I shoot one, it's like I'm I'm exterminating. And dad was saying that technically, you know, you need to even get like an exterminator's license or something like, I'm like, 
This is how ridiculous is our country that you have to have an exterminator's license to technically be allowed to harvest a squirrel that's damaging your house. I don't know if that's completely true or if that's just like if I was to go over to the neighbor's house and they asked me to get rid of the squirrel that's chewing a hole in the end of their soffits, you know, would I could get in trouble for that. I have been to a live stream in a while. How's your morning, Zach? It is great. I'm here in Vermont. There's no 87 days video today, but next week I've already filmed it. Half of it's edited, so it's going to be even better because I'm not staying up all night editing it and posting it after no sleep. Though, so that way I'll have all week to edit this magical um, catch and cook of pizza in the Dutch oven, work up at the shelter, starting a fire with a bow drill that I made myself and uh, and just, you know, the usual kicking about, shooting the slingshot a little bit and stuff. Um, spring is here, so we're going to start getting into some awesome stuff up there. I'm going to try and change my strategy a bit so I can get more 87 days type videos out because I love shooting the slingshot and and doing the trick shot videos, but not a lot of you guys love, at um, least because I'm not feeling the love on how many uh, views those things get. I make a catch and cook the Easter Bunny, and that one's going through the roof right now. Um, it went from having like, I can't remember what it was, like 20,000 views in the first week, and all of a sudden the other day, now it's up to, you know, I saw all these comments on it, it's up to 80,000 uh, overnight almost. So I don't know when that's gonna even stop. So that might go in, until it hits the same as the uh, turkey video. Uh, are you still, do I am still doing the ketogenic diet. I, I have been off and on it, off and on it, off and on it. I've managed to put on a little bit of weight here at, uh, since Christmas because of, you know, eating too many bonbons and, and like, so I've been off and on it, which means that causes you to kind of stack on some weight, which is okay. It's not like I'm getting pudgy again, but, uh, you know, so just in case I can go out somewhere at some point to survive it, that I'll be thankful I did have that, um, which I'm hoping will come up soon here in the fall. So uh, yeah, back on the ketogenic diet and running again, and now that winter's over, stopped hibernating and rocking it, staying strong. So, um, and I put my Amazon store down below in the description. So if you guys haven't seen that yet, check it out. If you are interested in following me because of the ketogenic diet or slingshots or with the camera equipment I use, all of that is in my Amazon store so you can see what I use and, uh, and, and purchase the same stuff and be able to support my channel by doing so, which I really appreciate. And when I do videos on specific things like the Adelaide this morning, I'll put an Adelaide in the store that should you wish to purchase it would support my channel. I get kickbacks from all that stuff. How about the Fowler branded Leatherman with a file that can sharpen the Leatherman's own knife? They already have that. They already have that. What I would like is a Vitronox Fowler knife. They changed the one that I had out there in Patagonia. You can't. I can't. I don't see that anywhere to buy anymore. So the the new one is the exact same one, labeled the same way, the Spirit, but it has like a measuring tape on the side of it. And um, I was like, oh my goodness. And I, I opened up the thing on Amazon to look and it did not have the can opener turned into a spoon gouge. So they haven't they haven't heard me and copied me yet. They said they wanted to work together after the McFowler, but then I haven't heard anything from them. Maybe because they saw the views didn't go very far, but maybe once I do more McFowler videos, um, they'll change it. They'll respond a little quicker next time. Um, th things are growing slowly lately. They grew really fast after Christmas, and I've been fairly inconsistent with everything that's going on. It's been hard to remain consistent, and so, but we're making steps to make that happen and stuff. And if you guys live in New England, come and see me at the New England Bushcraft Show in Massachusetts, Massachusetts next weekend. I'll put the link below. If you're just hearing about this for the first time, you gotta come out. It's gonna be awesome. What food did you crave the most in Patagonia was the pizza every day. Fish head soup, I wish you were a pizza. You know, and I sing out the recipe, rosemary in the deep dish, pizza and the olive oil. And so we're gonna make that. I made that this week and that was gonna be this week's 87 days video, deep dish pizza in a cast iron pan. So um, that will be that will be in next week's uh, video with the whole start in the bow drill fire and making my own bow drill and things like that yeah. and up at the shelter. 
Uh, which part of Mass? I am not sure. You, I, I can't look it up on the phone while I'm talking to you, and I always forget which part of Mass. But uh, it's down there by Boston and then over a little bit. It's four hours from where I am in, in Union, Maine, if that tells you anything. I don't know. Um, I think I should have know that by now. Uh, if a magazine was to come to you for an interview, would you do it? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, the Backwoodsman's been running my article and uh, about the, I think it might still be on shelves in most places. It's uh, the, the yeah, because it's a two month, there. theirs is every, every other month, right? So the Backwoodsman still has my article from about the uh, Duck Hunter 3000. I think the next one is be how I kept my fire going for 50 days. And then it's going to be the Reed Boat or something like that. So they're going to, I think they're going to be running my articles for, for the majority of this year if I keep getting them to them. Are you going to, going to Oklahoma anytime? Note that I know of. No Oklahoma. Um, I got to go. It's time to get to church so I can join the rest of my family there. They were there for Sunday school, the littles and my mom. And so I'm going to head on over there and join them. So I have to say goodbye. If you are interested in any of the stuff that I talked about, there won't be any of that stuff in the description till I get back from church and this afternoon. And I'll throw all those links in the description. And you can look all the time in my links. And the playlists have been cleaned up so you can watch any of these if you're a new watcher you can go back and watch all of these videos in series which ones you liked if it's 87 days you can start at the beginning play them through don't feel like you have to watch them all um you can skip ahead cause sometimes there's ones that are more interesting than others and the slingshot videos are in a series how to shoot a slingshot there's a slingshot uh playlist there how to shoot a slingshot how to rig it all of it's there and of course all the links in the description that support this channel and give you a chance to shop at awesome places that I support are down there as well as my new Amazon store. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for all the likes and the shares and uh, just spending this time with me on Sunday morning. I'll see you guys later. I'm off to church. Fowler out.